Okay, just a few things before we get started. I'm just reminding you that we are still on track so far to have our test next Friday, which is the Friday before spring break, so you have two weeks left. Um, and that we're going to be talking about the behavior of waves today. We're going to be connecting back to those labs we did on Friday. And if you weren't here on Friday, you'll just have to do your best to visualize. Make sure you um, write down to everything that's on this slideshow. If I start going too fast, you can pause it. That's the beauty of watching it instead of me being there. So um, if I go to the next slide and you're not do done yet, just hit pause and rewind it a little bit until you're done with that slide. So first, reflection, and this is a vocabulary word, I will add it to Quizlet. Reflection, that is when a wave strikes an object and bounces off of it. Remember, we've been talking about waves for the past week. So a wave is going to move, and then it's going to bounce off. When it does that, it's called a reflection. All types of wave can be reflected, light waves, sound waves, um, any type of wave. Um, a wave in the ocean can be reflected. Echoes are reflected sound waves. So an example of a wave being reflected is you scream and you hear it come back to you. Um, it's bouncing off something. It's hitting something, bouncing off, and coming back to your ears. So law of reflection. And this is going to do with a station that we did on Friday. And just by the picture, can you visualize one of the stations you were at where you might have had a light going in at an angle? So the law of reflection, and we'll talk we'll go back to the station in a second. But the law of reflection is the angle of incidence, so your starting angle is all, always equal to the angle of reflection. So whatever your angle starts at, it's going to be reflected back at the same angle. Um, so with that being said, can you think of a station on Friday where you held something at an angle, it bounced off something and reflected back at an equal angle? Does the mirror with the flashlight come to your mind? It was station one. You held it. It was reflected to the ceiling. Then you had to move either the flashlight or the mirror to get it to reflect back to the wall. So you have to have a reflecting surface, whether it be water or a mirror, like station one. Um, incident ray was the ray of the flashlight. It hits at an angle. And the reflected ray bounces back at the e it's equal to the incident ray. So whatever, wherever the light shone on the um, ceiling or the wall was your reflected ray. Alright, so refraction, this was also a station. Refraction, this is the bending of a wave caused by a change in its speed as it moves from one medium through another. So can you think about a station you were at where you looked at something and it looked like something was bent? You should be thinking of station two. That's where we had a straw in water and a straw in jello. Um, the greater the change in its speed, the more the wave bends. So um, your straw should have looked bent in the um, water and the jello, one of them looked more bent than the other. That's because the speed, there was more change in speed. And you can see this fish kind of looks like it's bent a little bit. Don't really look like a straight fish. So moving to prisms, how do they work? Light waves enter into a prism, so you have your prism entering or not your prism, your light entering right here. It enters a prism and it slows it down. And when you're when the prism when the light is slowed down, uh you have these waves of different colors over here. So they bend, which is called refract, as they move through a new medium. 
So they're traveling over here. They enter a new medium. This The waves slow down. And you have a separation of light. The different colors of light bend different amounts. Thus the colors are separated. And the reason you see different colors is because each of these colors travel at a different speed. Um, and we'll talk more about the colors and how they travel different speeds later. But, um, so, the, the way prisms work, they enter, the light enters, slows down through the prism, and then you have a bent light on the other side. What does bend mean? It means refract. And the waves slow down, resulting in different colors. So how do prisms work? Again, continued, a real world example of rainbows. So I'm going to show you a video to explain this a little better than I can. To make a rainbow, you need three ingredients. Sunlight, water, and you. Sunlight, as you probably know, consists of all of the colors in the visible spectrum as well as a bunch of wavelengths of light that we can't see. And when light travels from one medium like air to another denser medium like water, it slows down and exits the new medium at a different angle than it entered. This is called refraction. In the case of water, light can enter a droplet, bounce off its inner surface like a mirror, and then exit at a sharp angle. Because each color has a different wavelength, they're each slowed to a different degree and refracted at a slightly different angle. So red light will exit the drop at 42 degrees from the angle at which the sunlight entered, but blue light near the opposite end of the spectrum will exit at 40 degrees with the other colors somewhere in between. The combined effect of this differently refracted light scatters the colors so that you can see them individually Roy G. Biv. And this is also where you enter the equation because the conditions have to be just right. Rainbows only happen when the sunlight is coming from behind you and is low in the sky. As the sunlight shines into a curtain of raindrops in the air in front of you, only one color from each droplet will refract at the exact angle necessary to directly reach your eye. So in one part of the sky, all the raindrops will bounce red light into your eye. All the other colors from those particular droplets will scatter either too high, too low, or too far to either side side for you to see them. But just a few degrees away in the sky, the blue light bouncing out of those raindrops will be the ones to reach you. With all those droplets refracting only a certain wavelength of light that hits your eye, together they create the illusion of a rainbow. So, what creates the bow of the rainbow? Well, actually, rainbows form in a full circle in front of you at an angle of 40 to 42 degrees from your line of vision. This means you'll always be at the center of any rainbow you see, which is kind of a nice thought, but it also means that the Earth is going to block the lower half of the rainbow, so you typically only see the upper arc. However, some extremely lucky skydivers, pilots, and mountaineers have gotten high enough above the horizon, precisely in the right conditions, to see a full circular rainbow. It does exist, but I am perfectly happy just seeing half of the rainbow staying right here on the ground. Thank you very much. Thanks for asking, and thanks especially to our Subbable subscribers who get these videos a little bit early for subscribing. Okay, so it pretty much combines everything we just talked about before this slide. So moving on, another vocabulary word you will see on your test, also added to Quizlet, is diffraction. Diffraction is when an object causes a wave to change direction and bend around it. Amount of diffraction depends on the size of the object the wave hits, the wavelength of the waves and just to refresh your memory what is wavelength think about it come up with your answer wavelength is the distance between two waves the length between two waves so the amount of diffraction depends on the size of the object and the wavelength sound waves tend to diffract much better than light waves because they are much larger so sound waves are bigger they're going to diffract better So the picture above has a smaller opening right here, thus there's more diffraction. See so the curve, there's more diffraction, more bending of the sound. Well, it's not, I'm assuming it's sound. Um, there's more space in between these objects, so there's less bending, less diffraction. Okay, um, absorption. Uh, we also did a station with this on Friday. 
And I want you to try to think of which one when I go over it. So this is when a wave strikes an object and it goes into it, so it's absorbed. That's going to be easy to remember. Absorbed means to soak in or go into something, like a sponge. So absorption is when a wave strikes an object and it is absorbed. Energy from the wave gets converted to thermal energy. And thermal energy pretty, ma pretty much means like heat energy, anything with heat. So um, which station... Do you think we had where something light was absorbed or a wave was absorbed into an object? Do you remember the station where you held a flashlight up through the paper? There was only one color that didn't go through the paper. The black one, it was absorbed into it. All of those were absorbing some kind of light. But black absorbs more. So dark colors are better at absorbing light waves than light. Thus, it's better to wear dark colors in the winter to stay warm. And during the summer, that's why we have our bright and spring light colored clothes. Because um, light doesn't absorb. The heat's not absorbed into it. So think back to that station. The light went through all of the papers except for the black one. Because it was being absorbed into it. It absorbed all the light. Okay, interference, this was also a station on Friday. Interference is when two or more waves combine to form a new wave. So, do you remember the station where you dropped two marbles? Some of y'all are confused what you were supposed to be doing. If you look down at the side of the uh, bin that you were dropping the marbles into, you could have seen ripples of waves hitting each other. This is called interference. So you had the waves from one marble and the waves from the other colliding into one another. So that's interference. There's two types of interference, constructive and destructive. Constructive is when you add two or more waves together. So the light parts of the wave, so what it means is the crest and the trough. See right here we have our two separate waves. The crest and the trough are added together to make a bigger wave. So it increases the amplitude Remember, amplitude is from this resting point to the crest. And you can see between these two waves, it is higher. So the crest plus crest equals a higher crest. Trough plus trough equals a bigger trough. And destructive is the opposite. It's when two or more waves subtract from one another from where they overlap. Opposite parts of the waves must line up. So we have a crest and a trough right crest right here and a trough right here, they're lined up. So they're going to take away from each other. Crest, trough, they're going to subtract. This is called destructive interference. So constructive add, destructive subtract. Okay, resonance, this was also a station. Um, Y'all had tuning forks. This was station, the last station, station six. Um, this is a process where an object is made to vibrate at its natural frequency by absorbing energy from another object that's vibrating. But they have to be at the same frequency. So you had two tuning forks that had the same frequency. You hit one, let it vibrate a little bit, then after a while you stop it. You can still hear the one that you didn't hit vibrating. And it's because it transferred its energy to... The one that was vibrating transferred its energy to the one that didn't get struck. So if you did this one right, you should have heard the one you didn't strike still vibrating after you stopped the one you strike. And this is called resonance. Okay, so um, at this time, you need to go pick up a... Uh, Sheet, I don't remember what number it is at the top of my head right now. Um, and work on that. We will check and go over it tomorrow. If it is not finished when I when I come around to check, you will get a zero. Okay, so make sure it's done. Use this time to finish your work. Don't sit there and do nothing. <laughs>